Advisor. I will be conducting your personality analysis today through a series of different tests. So the first test, I have a few different postcards. Can you please describe what you can see in this one? I'll give you a few seconds just to look at it first of all. So this is a pattern, it's from the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. And this is a snake's head furnishing fabric by William Morris. So I'll give you a few seconds to look at this. Okay, can you describe this postcard as best as you can? Mm-hmm. Okay, wonderful. I'm just going to make a note. Okay, and here is the second postcard. This is from the British National Trust, and it says a detail of the Minton tiles on the hearth floor in the fireplace of the billiard room at Dunster Castle, Somerset. This room was once a kitchen. Okay, so I'm going to let you look at this for a second. I'm going to give you a few seconds to admire this one. Okay. Can you please describe this postcard as best as you can? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Just making a note of those comments and observations. Okay, now, comparing the two postcards, which one do you prefer? Do you prefer number one or number two? Number one or number two? Okay, interesting. And can you tell me a little bit about why that particular postcard is more appealing to you? Okay, I see the colors are more attractive to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Yes, I see. This card. Okay, wonderful. The next two postcards I have for you, I have this one, which is from, which is a photograph from the Library of Congress, and it says, a view on the Tay at Perth, in Perth, Scotland, around 1890. So I'll let you admire this postcard for a few seconds. Can you please describe this postcard to me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other details that are worth mentioning? Yeah, okay. Okay, wonderful. The, yeah. Okay. Mm hmm. And the second postcard that I have, it is a painting by Catherine Forshaw called Oysters. Okay. And a 
I'm going to let you have a look at this one. Okay, can you please describe this postcard for me? Mm hmm Yep. Okay. So, I think that the stairs postcards. We have postcard number one and postcard number two. Which of these two postcards is your favourite? Number one or number two? Okay, and can you explain a little bit about why you are most drawn to that postcard? Okay, I see. now. So I have this little chicken, like this, and I also have this pig. Okay, can you please think of a name for this chicken? If you were to name it, what name would you give it? Okay, interesting. And does that name have any particular significance to you? Do you know anyone with that name? Okay. So the name is... Okay, and the same for the pig. Can you please give me a name for this animal? Okay, and do you know anyone with that name? Does it have any personal significance? Okay. Okay. And looking at these two objects, what do you think these objects might be used for? What do you think their purpose could be? Or do they not have a purpose at all? What do you think? Okay. Mm-hmm. Any other ideas what they could be? Mm-hmm. Okay, so now I want you to imagine that this chicken and this pig, they know each other. They know each other quite well. They've known each other since they were young. And they happen to bump into each other in the street. And I want you to imagine in your head how this meeting between the two of them might go. Okay, I'm going to give you a few seconds to really visualize and imagine this meeting between these two creatures. Okay, so just in your head, imagining how this might go. Okay, so in your imaginary meeting, what is the relationship between the pig and the chicken like? Is it friendly, unfriendly, or neutral? Okay. Mm-hmm. And in your mind, who instigated the conversation? Was it the pig or the chicken? Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, and when you were visualizing this meeting, did you imagine it like um, you were a third person watching the two of them, or did you put yourself in the shoes of either the pig or the chicken? Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm Wonderful. Moving on now, I have these different paint chips, okay, and I'm going to tell you the name of the colour, and then I want you to imagine what you think the colour will look like, and then I will reveal the true colour, okay? So, can you please imagine the colour December solstice. December solstice. Solstice. December solstice. Okay, please visualize the color. I'm going to reveal the true color in three, two, one. This is what the color actually looks like. How close was your imagination of the color compared to the true color on a scale of one to ten with 10 being 100% accurate, and 1 being 100% inaccurate. How close was your imagination to this colour? Okay. Wonderful. The next colour is called Lover's Secret. Please imagine Lover's Secret. I will reveal the colour in 3, 2, 1. And here is the true colour. How close was your idea on a scale of 1 to 10? Okay. Good. Now I have Cinnamon Sunset. Cinnamon Sunset. Please imagine Cinnamon Sunset. I will reveal the colour in 3, 2, 1. Here we have Cinnamon Sunset. How close was your idea of it? Okay. Next, I have Kentucky Bluegrass. Kentucky Bluegrass. I will reveal it in three, two, one. Here it is. And how close was your idea of this color on a scale of one to ten? Okay. Oh, ten. Next, we have Zany Jane. Please imagine Zany Jane. Three, two, one. Here we have the true colour. How close was your idea of it on a scale of 1 to 10? Okay. Mm hmm This is a tricky one. Next I have Union Jack. Union Jack. I will reveal it in 3, 2, 1. Okay. How close was your idea on a scale of 1 to 10? And finally, I have high visibility. High visibility. Three, two, one. Okay, how close was your idea of it? Okay. To ten. Wonderful. Now, I'm going to show you a chart with some different colors and numbers upside down. Okay, so this chart is often used to test for color blindness. I would like you to just have a look at the circles here. Okay, and which one of them jumps out at you the most? Which one are you most drawn to? Okay, interesting. And what is it about that particular circle? Is it the colour combination or is it the number? Okay. Yep, that's completely fine. So, the circle was... Okay, we're going to do it again. And I want you to see which is the 
which car, which circle you are most drawn to aside from your other option, okay? So what is the next circle that you are most drawn to? Okay, interesting. And once again, is it the number itself, the color combination? Okay, wonderful. I'm just going to note that down. And it's off. Okay. Do you have a lucky number? And have you had this lucky number since you were a child? Has your lucky number changed much um, through your life? Okay. Yep. Okay, wonderful. Now. I'm going to show you some coloured pencils which have a different colour on each side. Can you please tell me one thing that this colour reminds you of? Okay, and one thing that this colour reminds you of. Okay, and which colour do you prefer? Number one or number two? Number one or number two? Okay, the next colour we have, can you please tell me what, uh, tell me one thing that this colour reminds you of? Okay, and one thing that this colour reminds you of? Okay, and which colour do you prefer? Number one or number two? Number one or number two? This color reminds you of? Okay. Tell me one thing that this color reminds you of. Okay, and which do you prefer? Number one or number two? Number one or number two? you of. Okay, good. And which colour do you prefer? Number one or number two? Number one or number two? Okay. Okay, wonderful. I'm going to show you two animals two different animals than the pig and the chicken that we saw previously. The first animal is a caterpillar. It's a caterpillar toy. It makes a kind of jingling noise, if that's how you want to describe it. Okay. As you can see, it's made up of lots of different colours. Its head uh, is green and the tip of its tail is yellow and it has all of the colors of the rainbow in the middle. Okay, so this is object number one. And object number two is this unicorn which is on top of a pen. And the unicorn is squishy. You can 
squish it like so. It doesn't make so many sounds as the caterpillar, but you can tap on it like so. Okay, which object do you prefer? The caterpillar toy or the unicorn pen? Which one's your favourite? Okay. And can you please explain to me a little bit about your decision? Why is that one your favourite? Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. with different types of frogs. As you can see, it says types of frogs and it has all of these wonderful different types of frogs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover your eyes and when I uncover your eyes, I just want you to tell me which is the first frog to catch your eye, which is the, the first one which draws your attention, okay? So you don't need to overthink it, just trust your first instinct. Okay. I'm going to cover your eyes. And open. Which frog catches your attention? Okay, wonderful. Let me just... Okay. Going to cover your eyes once more. Which frog? Okay, I see. Yeah. And once more. Okay. Okay, interesting. Okay. So now I'm going to give you a chance to really study each of the frogs in order to choose a favourite. So, we have the pond frog, the green and black poison dart frog, the Kalula frog, the northern leopard frog, Argentine horned frog, Panamanian golden frog, Cope's grey tree frog, desert rain frog, tomato frog, true frog, Xenopus, glass frog. Let's get down to these at the bottom. Wood frog, Goliath frog, northern rain frog, Darwin's frog. And down here at the bottom we have white's tree frog, pickerel frog, African dwarf frog, and the giant ditch frog. Okay, so now you've been able to properly look at each of them. Which one is your favourite? Which one do you prefer? Okay, wonderful. And can I please ask you why you are drawn most to that frog? What is it about that frog in particular that you prefer? Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cuteness, yeah. Hmm. Slimy. The frog. Okay. Yep. Okay. Wonderful. 
Well, that is the end of our personality analysis session. So I do have your email and I will email through to you all of the results so that you can better understand yourself, um, which will be really useful for knowing yourself better and being able to interact with other people even better. Knowing yourself is always helpful, okay? So I will just email you your results um, in the next few days, okay? Wonderful. It was lovely to see you and I'll see you soon.